Hi, I'm Randy McLean, the president of Waypoint Analytics. I'm here with my friend and, uh, and co-conspirator on profitability, Bruce Merrifield. Um, Bruce is a master tactician for um, uh, eliciting profitability in places that uh, you wouldn't ordinarily find them in wholesale distribution companies. And in this series of, of war stories, we want, I wanted to go over some of the uh, circumstances and solutions to problems that you may run into or that you may have seen in the field and give you some insights on how the, these things are done so that you can go out and replicate them in your own, or, your own uh, environment. So Bruce, um, uh, uh, we run into what uh, you consider to be the cherry pickers and I think everybody has them where uh, you have people that are uh, not profitable and when you look at what they're buying the, the items may, are, are probably not popular or profitable either. So, uh, so why don't you tell us a little bit about, uh, about one of those instances. Okay, and also uh, to uh, frame it as a, as a general category, uh, when we do our customer profitability ranking reports, um, we have no problem looking at super profitable guys at the bottom, but when we go to the bottom and we see some big names that are sort of, we thought were good customers, prestigious customers, and they're losing money, we don't want to see it. It's just human nature. And we, our first reaction is we've got to fuss with the model to somehow make this guy look better. And you can fool the model all you want, and you can make the losers jiggle around amongst themselves, but they're all still super losers. Whether it's 15 grand or 18 grand, mm -hmm. we're still losing, we're still losing. So instead of trying to not look at the problem, putting your head in the sand, mm -hmm. why don't you look at the bottom 10 and just look for some easy wins and just go knock them off right away. So what are you gonna do Monday morning? You're gonna go down the 10 list and say, you know what's going on? And you'll see one for guys say, well, what's this? You dig a little deeper and you go, ah. And the story is, here's a guy who's ordering maybe $20 of stuff every single business day of the year. So maybe, let's just say, arguably say you have $10 margin, you've got a $100 transaction charge roughly, yeah. losing 90 bucks times 250, but, you're losing But this grand. is the theoretical, you had a real oh, no. this. this is a guy, and then we go say, we look at the SKUs, and there are 250 different SKUs, and they're all D items. There isn't, there isn't eggs, milk, butter, you know, the, the staples that these guys, none of that. And I looked at it saying, I've seen this movie before, this guy's a cherry picker. I said, well, what's a cherry picker? Well, he calls his number one buddy first, gives him all his stuff. Whatever he doesn't have, he goes to the next guy and says, hey, do you have any of these shorts? Right. And he's got some, and then he goes to the third guy, and maybe, for all I know, you're the fourth level shorts of the shorts of the shorts, because these are really super duper <laughs> dust collectors. Yeah. So you, you have a unique marketing proposition. You have a product he needs tomorrow to keep people busy, keep a customer satisfied and you're the only guy in the area that can deliver it, hmm. and you're gonna do it at 18, 20, you're gonna take care of him for $20,000 loss a year. Is this fair? And if you said, no, I, I'm gonna charge you, you have to have a strict minimum order of a couple hundred bucks, and you have to pay freight, what, what is he gonna say? You have the cherry, right? Right. Uh, so I said, I'll make the call, let's go. You know, so off I went with the vice president of sales and, a, and the salesman on the account kind of thing. We all sort of met there at a certain point because uh, you know I was able to get an appointment. I, I'm an mm -hmm. outside guy. I got a title in my card, and mm -hmm. this is the first time the sales rep had actually ever sat in a meeting with the owner of this big business. Oh, oh yeah. So, so I to confirm mm -hmm. that he's a cherry picker. I said, uh, "Gee, uh, first of all, thank you for the business. You know, you must like us. You gave us, you know, two hundred. Oh yeah, yeah. You guys are really good, and so forth." And I said. Uh, the only problem is, is that you know we're we're actually our transaction costs are much greater than the margins. We're losing a lot of money. So well, that's your problem. I said, well, you know, I I'd like to beg to differ. I mean, I think that we're obviously you need us to do something, and we're helping you. So you know, mm -hmm. we'll come back to it. I said, just let's back up and tell me over the last few years, who's been your number one spend supplier? Who's been your number two, number three, mm -hmm. and why? And if, and if, has there been any significant changes in allocation between them, and if so, why? Mm -hmm. And basically he said, I'm a loyalty buyer. I call this guy, and I have, my dad called him, I call him for we know each other like this, we're mm -hmm. in each other's weddings, and have a yeah. shared softball team, and so forth. So I call him first for everything I need. Mm -hmm. And then there were two brothers that inherited that distribution business. They had a civil war, and one guy split off. I, he's a bit of a goofball, but I like him, so I call him second. Mm -hmm. and I have a fraternity brother who I got a job with another competitor of yours, so I call him third. So I guess we call you fourth. And I'm looking at a 40-year-old guy who's a sharp guy. He's inherited a big business, and I'm thinking, what are the odds in the next year and a half or the next 20 years? He's going to say, you know, Clark has the best total economic value proposition. I'm going to switch my business to them. I give up my buddies, my friends, exactly. my family. Exactly. It isn't going to happen, okay? Yeah. So he's a cherry picker. 
And, and, so he, and then I ask, well, you know, you want to, he doesn't want to approve it. So I find something you leave us no choice, but here's what we'll do. We're going to change the terms unilaterally. I'm going to take that salesman off the account because he clearly has no value added here. Mm -hmm. And the cost of him being here, it's, 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 a, mutual, it's a mutual waste for both of you. Um, we're going to, no contract prices because he had contract prices because mm -hmm. he was potentially big. No mm -hmm. contract prices, strict minimum orders, unbundled freight you have to pay, and we're putting on credit hold because he was going long to take a discount. Why? Well, I don't know. know. He said, you guys, you guys, 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 get really narrow. And he said, you do that, I'll never buy from you guys again. And I said, well, that'd be great. Thanks a lot. I mean, he just saves a lot of money, and good luck. You know, take yeah. care. You know, if we could ever help you out on our terms, we'd be delighted to do so. So I picked these guys up off the floor, and now we go. <laughs> You know, and, and there was sort of stunned silence in the car, you know. These guys are going, and then out came the, the emotional, it wasn't even necessarily rational, it was, it was just human nature. It was like, oh my gosh, well, um, you know, he, he's going to tell other people how mean we were to him. And I said, well, yeah, and somebody said, hey, I understand you were mean to the, to the, to the king, you know, the really big guy. I say, Hey, it was just business, nothing personal. Ba 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 ba. What would you do, type of thing? They go, oh, that makes sense. I mean, I, I, I I'm, I'm happy to talk about measurable projective reality at any time anybody wants to have a conversation. <laughs> then another guy said, well, yeah, but you know, that's one call that we our inside sales guys got, even though it was like ten dollars a margin in it. I mean, ten dollars a margin, ten dollars a margin. And I said, if you go to any of these inside sales guys, if they're worth anything, you're running this business well, they've got more stuff to do on their to-do list than they've got time, and the phone keeps interrupting them from getting back on a quote, something special for a bigger, better customer. Mm -hmm. Think about that. So as fast as this phone doesn't ring, they now can go do something else, which actually has more margin dollar in it for some customer who we can make a raising level service. Uh, getting, getting, I said, gentlemen, it's like pruning a bush. As fast as you snip off parts, the, the root energy, which is all of our human beings coming to work every day, doing all that they can do every day, just flows to what's left, and it's going to blossom more fully. They really was struggling with that, but that's the way it works. Um, so what happened, the guy went on strike for a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. Then somebody came running in gleefully to report that to the CEO. He said, guess what? The guy called. Mm -hmm. And uh, we said, sorry, you're in credit hold. So he said, okay, the check's in the mail. Then we said, oh, you need a $200 minimum order. So he gave us more meat and potatoes. Then we charged him mar freight with markup at list price. And basically the guy became a $36,000 a year house account. Wow. You know, at a 5% operating profit margin oh, okay. because the company still had the cherries. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. And a, and a variation on it is I've seen some, loca some distributors have sort of C-store locations in, mm -hmm. a, in, a, in a regional area. Right. And they'll cut a contract deal with some big guy who then gives all his meat and potatoes to somebody else. But if their van is ever in a neighborhood and needs to quickly get something, they hop in and say, I want this and I want the contract price, bill me. Oh. So they want the out of the warehouse price, but they want it the here and now C store where there's an extra step in cost and so forth because they want to strip the guy yeah. of his convenient uptime location value proposition. Right. And if you said, I'm sorry, you know, you, you know, it's cash, credit card, list price, what's the guy going to do? He's going to pay it. Well, whether he pays six bucks, you know, or 10 bucks, he's going to bill it to the customer anyway, and it's $60 of uptime opportunity cost. So yeah. they, they have the cherries there also. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's actually great insights into that kind of thing. And again, it's not risky or dangerous to do these things. It just takes a little bit of uh, courage to get outside the box, uh, but to recognize that you're looking for win-win all the time. And uh, people that aren't willing to have a win-win are people that are going to have, you know, basically you've got to put your energies elsewhere. So, and you don't always lose them when you do. Yeah. So at any rate, uh, thanks a lot for uh, spending time with us. Uh, be sure to check out the other uh, videos in our War Story series and, and uh, our other helpful videos to uh, give you more insights and tactics and strategies you can use to make more money. So thanks a lot, we'll see you next time. Hi, it's Randy McLean. If you found this video helpful, we have so much more to share with you. Just head over to apicconference.com profit and sign up for our innovative profit tips series. It's a great collection of materials all designed to show you how to drive more profit in your business without necessarily having to increase sales. Or simply text your name and email address to 480-207-3433 and we'll get you started right away.